Mark chapter 15. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, you have said so. And the chief priests accused him of many things. And Pilate again asked him, have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the feast, he used to release for them one prisoner for whom they asked. And among the rebels in prison who had committed murder in the insurrection, there was a man called Barabbas. And the crowd came up and began to ask Pilate to do as he usually did for them. And he answered them saying, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release for them Bar Barabbas instead. And Pilate again said to them, then what shall I do with the man you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, crucify him. And Pilate said to them, why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released for them Barabbas. And having scourged Jesus, he delivered him over to be crucified. Well, Mark 15 uh, takes us through the events uh, leading up to uh, the death of Jesus and uh, the uh, fulfillment of Jesus' own uh, passion predictions uh, that he would be handed over to the Gentiles, fulfilled in uh, handing over to, uh, to Pilate. What's uh, interesting as you read through uh, chapter 15 is uh, there's a kind of phrase that comes up again and again, and it is the phrase, the king of the Jews. Uh, so it's there, chapter 15, verse 2, are you the king of the Jews? Uh, verse 9, do you want me to release the king of the Jews? Uh, verse 12, what shall I do for the, uh, the king of the Jews? Um, the soldiers mock Jesus. Verse 18, hail, king of the Jews. The inscription over Jesus, uh, cross, uh, verse 26, the king of the Jews. And then uh, related, uh, the, the chief priests mock, verse 32, let the Christ, the king of Israel, come down now from the cross that we might believe. So it's interesting that uh, Mark, I think, is underlining here is Jesus at kingship revealed. Uh, here he is, the son of God, the Christ, uh, revealed uh, supremely as he dies on the cross. The, uh, people can't see it. For them, it's this it's this, um, utter folly to think uh, that Jesus would be uh, the, the king of the Jews, this man who is crucified. But it's precisely what uh, Paul says. You know, we, pro we proclaim Christ and him crucified. Christ, the king, and him crucified. Jesus is uh, crucified. Uh, he's uh, innocent. Pilate proclaims him innocent. And uh, we even have the, the farce of Barabbas, a murderer, uh, uh, being released while Jesus, the innocent one, uh, goes um, to his death. Mark doesn't develop this, but there does seem to be this kind of picture of substitution. It's not that uh, Jesus dies instead of Barabbas, precisely, but I think we can see uh, that there is this kind of substitution going on, that the the innocent suffering, the guilty uh, going free. Um, he's mocked. He's mocked by the soldiers. He's mocked by the passers-by. He's mocked by the uh, the, the Jewish uh, leaders, even though he is uh, innocent. Uh, and then uh, with the uh, the actual time of his death, uh, 33 to 41, we've got darkness coming over the land. Uh, think back to the, uh, the darkness of the plagues, darkness uh, symbolic of... Um, God's judgment and Jesus, as he experiences God's judgment, cries out. And uh, certainly uh, his the feeling of his experience expressed in the words of Psalm 22, verse 1, um, in um, verse 34, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The people misunderstand as they've misunderstood the whole way through the gospel. And they think uh, the words Eloi, Eloi, he's calling uh, Elijah. And uh, they want to see Elijah um, uh, rescue him. That's not going to happen. Uh, Jesus uh, can't be uh, rescued. Um, earlier, the, uh, the chief priest had said he saved others. He cannot save himself. Let him come down from the cross that we might see and believe. Well, uh, Jesus can't save others unless he, uh, he dies. And uh, uh, the, the irony of, the, the, disciple, of the, uh, uh, the Jewish leader saying, let us see and believe. You can't uh, believe if you're uh, if you're blind and consistently throughout the gospel that the uh, the Jewish leaders have been shown to be uh, blind. The person who does recognize, though, 
Uh, Jesus is uh, the centurion who, when Jesus dies, uh, verse 39, when he sees how he breathed his last, says, uh, truly, this man was the son of God. So this this Gentile, I think I might have said Jewish, this Gentile centurion uh, recognizes uh, that Jesus is the son of God, uh, even though here he is on the cross. He's the one who's uh, put two and two together, who's recognized that this crucified one is uh, is the son of God. So there's a sense in which the gospel is now opening up for uh, the Gentiles. At the same time with Jesus' death, uh, the, the temple curtain is torn in two, uh, which may symbolize access uh, for everyone to God. But uh, in the context of chapter 13 in particular, I think is this is the beginning of the end for the, the temple. This is the beginning of the end for um, a narrow Jewish particularism. It, it's uh, the, the gospel is open for uh, everyone, including this um, uh, centurion, this Gentile centurion who uh, recognizes Jesus. Uh, the women there uh, follow him, who'd followed him and ministered to him, they're the ones who remain uh, at the cross. Everyone else has fled, uh, but they remain uh, faithful as they uh, watch him, albeit from a, a distance, uh, but they are there with him to the end. Then uh, the last section of the chapter, we have uh, his uh, burial. Uh, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the consul. So again, it's interesting, immediately having uh, shown us that uh, this Gentile centurion recognizes Jesus. Uh, then we have the Jewish women. Then we have uh, Joseph, uh, a, a Jewish, uh, high-ranking Jewish official who uh, expresses his faith in Jesus by um, going to Pilate to, to ask uh, for the, uh, the body. Uh, so, um, you know, we, we're getting the, the negative of the kind of the um, majority of the Jewish leadership failing to recognize who Jesus is. But then we're getting the, the wonderful positive of following his death, this uh, centurion, these women and Joseph of Arimathea are remaining uh, there and, and remaining faithful uh, to Jesus. So the, the chapter as a whole uh, challenges us. Uh, is our concept of Jesus as king? Um do, do we tie that to the cross? Do we, do we understand that it is uh, the Christ who is crucified that is king? Now, he's going to uh, raise from the dead. He'll be seated at uh, God's right hand, chapter 12. But it's his, uh, his death on the cross that kind of supremely expresses his uh, kingship. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for Jesus uh, crucified uh, for our sins uh, to save us. Thank you that he did not come down from the cross, but remained there so that we might be saved. And thank you that as he uh, dies on the cross, we see that he is uh, your king and uh, our savior. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.